Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we are going to be reviewing Newton's method, uh, giving it a uh, mathematical uh, derivation, as well as the uh, geometric or uh, graphical uh, interpretation, and work through a simple example. I hope you find it useful. Okay, well, what is uh, Newton's method? It is a technique to solve a nonlinear equation or a set of nonlinear equations. Big picture is that we have a function f of x, and we want to find the root of f of x, which is denoted by uh, x star. And to derive uh, Newton's method, uh, we're going to use a Taylor's expansion, and we're going to expand f of x star, which is the root, about an iterative point x to the m, or xm. And so doing Taylor's expansion, we get the similar, the function at xm plus the derivative of xm times delta x, plus, well, the second derivative times the uh, delta x squared plus higher order terms. This turns out this is all we need. Now recall that the left-hand side, f of x zero, f of x star, that is equal to zero. And so we will take a use of that and we are going to solve this equation and say that x star is approximated by our guess, xm, minus this correction factor uh, plus what's left over should be order delta x squared. And we're going to use this equation, this part of the equation, as a basis for an iterative scheme. And we'll say that our next iteration is replacing x star. That's equal to the previous iteration uh, and this correction factor. So this is Newton's method. And it is uh, order delta x squared for convergence. This is a type of fixed point iteration. Fixed point iteration is a form x equals f of x. And why is that of interest? Well, there are a lot of mathematical form, uh, theories that you can go through uh, to show uh, convergence and convergence rate. We're not gonna be diving uh, into that, but uh, Newton's method is a fixed point iteration and there are uh, mathematical theorems that can uh, you know, prove convergence and so forth. All right, well, Let's step through the process. So we have a function f of x, and we're going to guess a starting point for the root, xm. And we'll let's go ahead and calculate the value of f of x at that point. And well, if it's equal to zero, plus or minus some epsilon, because this is going to be, uh, we're using a computer for this, and we're likely never going to get exactly zero. So we specify our tolerance or uncertainty that we can live with. In this case, I call that epsilon one. Maybe it's a 1 times 10 to the minus 4, or whatever. And, well, it turns out that if uh, we satisfy that, good guess, we can stop, and our root is equal to our initial guess. Else, let's go ahead and iterate, and so we're going to calculate the derivative at our guess, xm, and that's going to allow us to calculate the correction factor. And so we'll do that, calculate the next iteration, and another possible stopping criteria is that, well, maybe my change in x is quite small so i can stop so you can check there again uh, these uh, stopping criteria are uh, certainly not the only ones that you can use i'm not even going to say it's the best usually it's a combination of both uh, but this is another thing that you should consider and if we can stop there then let's go ahead and stop and then we're done else let's set xm equal to xm plus one and iterate and keep going through until either we've reached our counter, because maybe we're uh, never going to find a solution, uh, or we've satisfied our stopping criteria. So that's the big picture and how to do that. Now, let's look at the graphical interpretation of uh, Newton's method. And recall that the uh, derivative of the function at xm, well, that's the slope of the tangent line. And we're going to use that to have a graphical interpretation of Newton's method. And recall that the uh, slope is just equal to the rise over the run. And let's consider a very simple function where f of x is equal to 5 minus 2x minus x squared. Here it is plotted. And it looks like the root is uh, somewhere around uh, 1.4. But let's uh, take a crappy guess and say that x equals a 1 is our first guess. So the first thing we do is we calculate the uh, value at uh, x equals to 1. Clearly, we're not close to 0. And... Now let's calculate our tangent line. And go ahead and draw it on here. It's going through the point x equals to 1 and the function evaluated at x equal to 1. And our next 
guess, the iterative guess for the root is going to be where the tangent line equals to zero. And we're going to prove that, that we're going to get the same equation that we obtained when we uh, derived it from uh, Taylor's expansion. Okay, so uh, what is the slope? Again, the left-hand side is known. That's rise over run. And, well, the rise is going to be f of x evaluated at xm, which in this case was 1, minus 0, because we're looking where the tangent line crosses the x-axis, and then just delta x in the denominator. And again, the left-hand side is known. We know everything but x, uh, our next itera iteration for the root, xm plus 1. And we solve for that, and we get the exact same equation. So there is a calculus-based derivation basis for Newton's method, and I've also shown you the uh, graphical. Let's go ahead and walk through another simple example and show how they stack up. So again, here's another simple equation. And it's plotted here. Again, while you're working these things, you typically don't have the equation plotted. This is embedded inside a computer code. And every time you use this, it's going to be getting a different equation. Maybe it's a energy equation for solving a pretty massive uh, uh, hydraulic network, whatever. And uh, but we're going to work through here with a simple single equation. And to keep count of everything, we're going to denote our iteration by the first column, the guesses or iteratives for our roots. And then the function, f of xm, which is y, the derivative, and then the delta x. And we're going to walk through until we uh, eh, get acceptable convergence. Okay, so let's start off again with a crappy guess of the initial guess of 3. And well, clearly that's uh, not anywhere near 0. So we're going to evaluate that at equal to 3. It's y is equal to 0.7. Calculate the derivative. Go ahead and draw in the tangent line. And we're going to see that uh, this tangent line crosses over, looks like it crosses over at minus 0.5. And we're going to go ahead and calculate the delta x. And this is what I mean by delta x. This is part of the uh, Newton's method. And sure enough, it's minus 3.5. So our next iteration is going to be 3 plus a minus 3.5. So iteration 1, our root is now minus 0.5. So once again, let's check to see if we're close to zero. And no, yeah, we're not anywhere near uh, close to zero. In fact, an absolute value has gotten further away from zero. So we need to continue. So let's calculate the uh, derivative and draw in the tangent line. And I'll expect that the tangent line is crossing a little before uh, one. And we calculate our delta x using the uh, same equation out of the Newton's method. And our next iteration, sure enough, our root is at 0.861. And so let's evaluate the y at that value. And while it's getting smaller, that's probably not a very good convergence criteria because we're not really very close to the root. And so we need to keep going. And so let's go ahead and calculate the derivative. You see the tangent line. And now showing this graphically, I can see that we are getting to the point where that's not very useful is that the tangent line is clearly, uh, uh, from a graphical point of view, very close uh, to where the actual root is. So I'm not going to be doing any updating the plot anymore. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue with the uh, the iteration. And it's going to iteration number three. And so we can calculate our next uh, root at 1.156, which is actually shown there. And calculate the y, which now it's, uh, you know, absolute value of 8.7 times 10 to minus 3. That's getting closer to a useful convergence criteria. Uh, but let's keep going. So let's go ahead and calculate our delta x, 0 0.015. Again, that probably doesn't satisfy most uh, uh, convergence criteria. So let's do at least another iteration, update our root. And now we see that our function value, uh, absolute value is uh, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 5th. And our delta x is uh, roughly 4 times 10 to the minus 5th. And so likely in all this is a good chance that this would uh, satisfy our convergence criteria and we would stop and our root is a uh, 1.17 okay so that's uh shows you an example now let's discuss uh, when can we use newton's method it's, it's used all the time because it is very powerful but it does have shortcomings and one of the shortcomings well clearly if the derivative is equal to zero it blows up now, in machine language, it's actually uh, hard to achieve a uh, number stored in uh, memory as e exactly equal to zero. Uh, but Newton's method 
uh, struggles when the derivative is anywhere near uh, zero. And again, I, I mentioned this is a fixed point iteration, and uh, you can show based upon the derivative uh, when it will uh, converge. Uh, but the bottom line is, is it, it, that sounds great, but really it kind of says that if your initial guess is good enough, you will converge. That's not, not really that useful. Okay, another time where uh, this uh, Newton's method might, you might not want to use it is if the derivative is very difficult to calculate. And so maybe there's a better method, and there is. And if we have multiple roots. Uh, so maybe in the examples that we showed, there's only one root, but maybe there's multiple roots, and it's likely you're going to find uh, one of the roots, and it may not be the root that you're actually looking for. Well, there are other methods that address some of these shortcomings. None of these methods are perfect. Uh, if the uh, derivative approaches zero, is that you can apply a damping factor, which would be a damping factor before this correction factor. And that does help with convergence, but it also uh, changes it from quadratic convergence to linear. So it's going to be much more slowly to converge. And for the second one is if the uh, derivative is hard to calculate, then there's something called the secant method, where we replace the derivative uh, with a numerical approximation of the derivative. And uh, that also has a pretty good uh, convergence. It converges at a rate of 1.6 versus 2 for Newton's method, uh, but it's still quite good. And this uh, method is uh, commonly used. And last, not least, in fact, this is probably the oldest of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, nonlinear uh, root finding techniques. It's the uh, method of false position. And the uh, beauty of this method is that you can specify an interval, essentially, of where you would want to find the root. Again, it's not going to converge as fast as the secant or Newton's method, but it does have that advantage. I am going to do uh, future videos on each of these uh, three methods, so if you're interested, uh, please look out for those. All right, well, that wraps up uh, this coverage of Newton's method. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if so, please like and subscribe. Uh, but more importantly, have a great day.